Hey folks, so today we're going to take a look at Vector FM. It's a part of the Inspired by Nature pack, built by Dylan Baston, available with Live 11 Suite. And gut would tell you, right, your instinct would tell you it's a MIDI instrument, so we're going to hit record enable and play our keys. And while that certainly works, it can be confusing at the outset if we don't understand how this device works uh, as to what our options are. So let's click where it says MIDI and let's push up. And now we're going to hear this voice that just starts running. In fact, I could even turn record enable off right now. In order to understand this further, let's click the second button down from the top and open these FM parameters. And just so that we don't go crazy right now, let's mute this track. So here's a quick explanation of FM synthesis. In FM synthesis, we have these sources or oscillators referred to as carriers and modulators. They serve different roles. The carrier is the one we always want to hear in the audio path. The modulator's job is to influence the carrier. It's not always heard. So any changes we make to the modulator are going to affect the way the carrier sounds. And so to understand that at a basic level, let's reset some things right out of the gate here. Now the beauty of these Inspired by Nature devices is we can uh, take these physics simulations and modulate things with them. And so in this device we have these particles that are going to be bouncing around floating around and we can take that movement and assign it to certain parameters so for right now let's just zero out all this modulation so we can understand how fm is working I'm simply going to go through and assign all these to none just for right now so right now this moving particle isn't going to have any effect on our sound just so we can learn the basics let's unmute it and now i just have my little carrier that i'm hearing and so any changes i make to my modulator affect the way that carrier sounds so right now I'm retuning my modulator here. Uh, I can do that in three different ways. I can do it by hertz. I can do it in relation, in a ratio relationship to the carrier. I can also tune it by harmonics, which is gonna sound a little bit more musical. And then I have this thing called the modulation index. And when I crank this up, basically what's gonna happen is I'm adding more and more side bands, which is gonna make it sound crazier. So let's play around with some of these different settings. See what happens. We get a more aggressive sound with higher modulation index. I can play with some different shapes of my modulator. And again, everything that I'm changing on this modulator is affecting the way the carrier sounds. That's at the crux of how FM works. But let's start to have a little more fun with this device. So let's assign this first modulation option here. Let's assign it to affect the panning. This is how it's defaulted when you pull up your device. Uh, so let's unmute it. And now the position of that particle affects the panning, which is pretty cool. And then by default on your device, the next dial, what it's dialed up to affect is the uh, tuning of the modulator, which we just did by hand. So now the position of this particle is going to affect the tuning of the modulator. So let's have some fun with some of these parameters. We can slow down the speed, the overall scale. We can change some tuning options here on our modulator by hand. Understanding the particle is using this as a starting position to then do its modulation. All right, already fun, but let's learn a little bit more here. So uh, let's go to this first button now, and we're going to see our operator algorithms. And so let's unpack this a little bit. So uh, notice as soon as I add a second voice, I get another particle that's floating around here. The word operator goes back a ways in FM synthesis, but basically what we're seeing here are different relationships we can choose between carriers and modulators. So with two voices, I can choose one of these relationships, and I can always tell the one that has the white circle around it is the one that we're hearing here in the signal path, and we can see that in the diagrams. So let's unmute it, and let's hear how this changes the modulation. Change the speed up a little bit. So this one you can see I have the carrier being modulated by the modulator, but then the modulator is modulating itself. Here's another option where both are self-modulating. So let's maybe crank some other things. Maybe pull our index down. Maybe crank the speed up. Now if I go back here and I add more voices, like let's say, uh, let's go back to this, this setting here. Let's say I add a third voice. Well, it's just waiting for its other little partner here. And when I add four, now I've got two different iterations of this relationship. And every time I click, 
I'm restarting and re-triggering those particles. So you can see we can go up to four here. Now with four particles, I have these options for these relationships, and I can get some wildly different results. <laughs> Let's look at some more options here. This third knob, uh, by default, is assigned to gain. And I want you to understand the reason why this is affecting more than volume is because in FM synthesis, anytime we affect the amplitude of modulators, we're adding more and more sidebands is what ends up happening. That's a primitive way of describing it. So understand when you assign, for example, this is particular modulation is the distance out from the center that the particles are moving. So that motion is going to affect the gain, which in an FM setup can really have some crazy results. Let's talk about how these guys are behaving a little bit in, in a little bit more detail. Let's click on this last button uh, and we can see charge. So this is going to set the positive or negative charge for these particles, blue being positive and negative being orange. Now setting that and going to this other pane, uh, I can have a little bit more fun since these are now different colors. I can look at the attractor here. Uh, the attractor is this square in the middle and I can click and drag and move this attractor around and you can see my particles are chasing it. They're magnetically attached. Uh, they're magnetically attracted. So I can con control the strength of that attraction here. I can control which colors are attracted, right? Right now, blue's heavily attracted and now orange is heavily attracted. And then again, every, uh, the velocity, the overall speed is here as well. Speed is in a couple of different places, right? Speed is here, but I can also control the, other, the overall velocity of the motion of these particles as well. I can also control the overall magnetism, the overall attraction between these particles here. And again, it's a shame I'm having to talk all over this, right? Because I'm talking over some really crazy things that are happening. Again, what happens here depends on how we have these modulators routed. So like, for instance, let's have the velocity uh, control the modulation index. This by default. That's pretty crazy. Play with some different velocities. Wow, this is crazy. So I can control the overall magnetism, how these charges, these particles are attracted to each other. I also have this thing here called flow field. Flow field uh, engages this thing that looks like a maze and I can control how these particles move around this maze uh, and the strength of their motion, which is also tied into velocity as well, as far as how quickly they move around. Let's unmute and hear how this is affecting it. And again, Depends on how I have my modulators set up here. Maybe pull the index down. I can also control some things about this flow field. Notice if you click and drag, you can change the, d the direction of these little arrows. And so the particles will flow in that direction. Let's unmute it again. <laughs> It's crazy. So this last option here, we can assign the mass of our particles to modulate something. I thought it'd be fun to maybe try it on the carrier's tuning. Now, when you assign something to modulate the carrier's tuning, you have an option here to tune it to a scale. So in order to understand how this is working, I uh, right now I have my operator set to just two voices and we're hearing the output of both of these carriers. Uh, and now let's unmute it. And every time I click and generate new particles at new mass sizes, the pitch will change. Last thing I wanna show you here is this emitter button. Similar to what we saw in the mitt, as soon as I turn this button on, it's going to start bursting out particles at a certain rate. So right now it's set to three and I can change the note value here and it's going to emit certain particles at a different rate, depending on my settings here. 
so it can make it a little bit more rhythmic. So let's talk practicality. It takes a lot of skill and discipline and study to be able to sit down and make something practically musical with an FM synthesizer. I'm amazed at my friends that can do it. It's not something that I'm particularly skilled at, but it's great, at least for me, it's great for making really creative, amazing, abstract sounds. Let's kind of in when we started. If we wanted to play this as a MIDI instrument, we could simply pull this button back down to MIDI. And now that we understand the context of this device, what's going to happen is when we record enable our track whatever notes we play those are the numbers of particles that we're going to have so for example if I hold down four notes or three notes and I choose this option here for my algorithms I can now see the relationship between those three notes that I'm holding down that makes more sense. So I certainly didn't hit every parameter. There's some other cool tricks here, uh, but I hope I, this at least lets you understand a little bit more of how this device is working. I would love to hear what you've discovered with this device. If you've discovered any tricks that I totally missed, uh, I love the community that we have here that we're starting to build. So if you've learned tricks that you want to share, please post them in the comments so everybody can see. Uh, I would love to learn from you guys. So I hope this at least helps you get hit the ground running with Vector FM. Let me know what you think.